Hey guys, Quangus here. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create your own data pack. If you don't know, data packs are a way of enhancing your Minecraft experience. There are a lot of things data packs can do, such as creating and or modifying advancements, dimensions, functions, loot tables, predicates, crafting recipes, building structures, tags, biomes, and even changing world generation settings. Out of all of these, data packs are primarily used for functions, as it is a more preferred alternative to command blocks. There are a few Few main differences between each. First off, functions are executed by commands and not redstone. They can execute anywhere, unlike command blocks where you have to keep the command block chunk loaded. This video will be focused on functions as there's a lot to learn about. We'll be covering other features in separate videos. So let's get started! Before we get into anything, we need some tools to help create this data pack. First of all, we need a text editor. I recommend the Atom text editor as it is specialized in coding. Second, we'll need an output log. Output logs are a good way to troubleshoot if there are any problems with any commands. Data packs do not show output by default, so you're going to have to turn it on manually. What you need to do is go to Minecraft Launcher, Settings, and enable Open Output Log when Minecraft Java Edition starts. Now after you play Minecraft again, the output log should appear. Now we can start creating the data pack. So first off, we need to access our .minecraft folder path. So the best way to access it on Windows is to go to Options, Resource Packs, Open Pack Folder. Now Open Pack Folder should open this up, and then you just go to .minecraft. .minecraft is where all the, uh, all the files are stored. To access the .minecraft folder on Mac, you do the keybinds command space to access spotlight search. Type in tilde library slash application support. And then after that, do slash Minecraft. And then there's a folder at the bottom. Just click that and you access .minecraft. The next thing you want to do after you go to .minecraft is head over to saves. Saves is basically where all your Minecraft worlds are stored. So let's get back here for a second. Uh, see, uh, real command tutorials, hide and seek, all that stuff. It's all in saves. Same thing right here. Now, you want to pick the world you want your data pack to be into. It's just temporary. You don't, you don't have to worry. You can always transfer the data pack later to another world. But for now, you want to create your data pack where you want to work on it and debug, test, all that stuff. So I'm just going to go to real command tutorials and data packs. I already have three data packs in here right now. First thing you want to do is go and create a new folder and we're going to call it um, tutorial. I'm going to call it tutorial data pack. So we're going to move this data pack over to our text editor, mine is Adam. So I have this little project tree right here. I just move it here and it adds a new project folder. This project folder, I'm going to add a new file uh, and a new folder. Uh, first one, we're going to add a folder called data. And so data is here. This is very similar to resource packs. If you know how to make a resource pack, basically you need a pack.mc meta. Pack.mc meta basically gives a description and actually makes the folder uh, a data pack identification. So uh, Minecraft can actually identify that this is a real data pack. I'm just gonna copy this over uh, real quick. Let's put it right here. It has to be right there. All of this right here is basically identifies what version if it's compatible and if it's not so i think right now the the main uh the main pack that mc meta is pack format 5 description uh whatever it doesn't matter and then game version uh well not 16. i'll leave the pack that mc meta format but i'll also leave the whole data pack file in the description for you to download and try out for yourself anyway the next thing we want to do is in data first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a minecraft folder a uh, minecraft folder in what this means is that it's going to override anything from minecraft now in this sense it doesn't always mean that you're actually going to be overriding any features of the game but sometimes yeah so we're just going to have a minecraft folder and we're also going to add another folder in the data uh we're going to call it whatever we want as long as it's a word or a word with an underscore something like tutorial like this or you can do data pack but you have to have an underscore so you should have something like this uh, tutorial data pack data minecraft tutorial and then the pack that mc meta up here we're going to be adding functions into the game so first of all we're going to be adding a function folder into tutorial and so basically you have to name it specifically functions because if you don't minecraft is not gonna 
think it's a function and it's just some random file so if we go into functions right here so it should be tutorial functions leave minecraft alone for now we're gonna worry about that later and so in functions we're gonna be creating our first function file so if we go to a new file we're gonna call it init.mc function mc function is the file name it has to be in functions in the function file extension what you write in here is just regular command block so we could just do say hi real quick now there's some rules there's some differences so first of all you cannot do called the slash because that there's no point this is already an mc function file and so if you do a slash it's just not going to count now each line as you see right here is basically the same thing as a chain command block and this is really good because you can be organized with your uh, commands. It doesn't take up world space, nothing happens. If you do say hi and say I or something like that, uh, say hi will go first because it's higher. We're just gonna do a simple say hi. If we hop into our Minecraft world and try it out, to execute this function, basically what you wanna do is do slash function. And slash function has gives you all the functions that are available with all the data packs that are enabled. And to detect if you actually have a data pack enabled, just do slash data pack, uh, data pack. And then there's also disable and enable. Uh, so we're gonna do data pack list real quick. And so we have these data packs that are enabled. We have vanilla, which is default data for Minecraft. My, my pathfinding, my data, my TW data pack and my tutorial data pack. So these are all uh, enabled. So just a quick note, new data packs are always enabled on default so if you ever want to disable one like data pack disable we can disable my uh tw just for that and disabling it gives it a reload a reload is basically a a refresher code so if we said say hi right here but then we changed it to say i the uh, minecraft code won't actually say i because it's not reloaded so reloading will just refresh and just reinstall the new code you see down here tutorial in it the file path in it dot mc function becomes tutorial in it in here because it's in the file tutorial and when we do it it should say hi notice that says me that's hi and the reason why is because i ran the function we never stated in the um function that we said hi the reason why is since we did slash function we were executing as ourselves and the function realized that we were executing and decided that I would say hi. I gave myself a command block, execute as Quangus say hi. Run say hi. It does the same thing basically. So if we had two more of this, say hi, say hi, say hi, we're gonna have to do this two more times, like this. And that basically means you're gonna have to have execute as Quangus for each because it does not it does not detect uh, who's executing each time so we, ha we have to do something like this see it executes as me three times now if we just said say hi and then we execute it it would execute as a command block and so basically the functions are way bit better you see we did the same thing but without the execute as coin it first of all we have to reload so after we do function tutorial in it again, we execute as high three times. It's really good because you can keep that, I guess we would call ourselves a variable, keep that variable stored in that function and keep executing, executing as us. Instead of these command blocks, which have to like, you know, execute each block as me. We're gonna be working on some more stuff. So remember when I said about Minecraft, this folder right here, the, work on it later now we're going to be working on it we're going to create a new folder called tag tag and then in that tag we call it functions again oh not tag uh tags the with an s like that and in here these two files we're going to be adding now are going to be our load and tick files load is basically every time you reload it executes like a load function any setup like adding scores for one time and it's super helpful we have to do a uh, load.json we have to do json because it's a type of tag file we do tick.json as well and so we have these two files right here and what we're going to be putting in them is this uh i just copied this from another one we're gonna just call this tutorial because that's how we called the other function in slash function. So if we did values and then slash uh, tutorial, 
this is what we see um basically this means that you know every time you reload it will uh, execute this one time tick.json is very similar to a repeating command block which every tick it executes a command and so we're going to copy this over and we're going to make a new file here we're just going to call it tick.mc function and in this file which we copied the uh from the load.json we're just going to call this one just tick now so now what we're going to do is we're just going to test out if these things work so if we did for the in it we're going to say say loaded real quick and for the tick we're going to do say tick and so now if we reload this it should say see it says here server it says loaded and now it's not there anymore and now if we this is saying tick every tick so if we do that it's going to be uh, covered up because the server keeps saying tick and so that's good we know the server is going to execute every tick and as well the server has loaded its function i guess now that you got up to this point what we're going to do is we're going to be adding a simple crouch detection and basically what we're going to do is create a scoreboard in the init function in the tick function we just execute if someone is crouching so in the init we're going to do just scoreboard just add crouch minecraft dot custom minecraft that's sneak time and yep that's basically the whole load function this executes one time so we don't have a lot of files running at the same time and in tick basically what we're gonna do is execute as at a and then do scores and what we're gonna do is do crouch equals one and basically this means that execute as everyone who's crouching or who has a sneak time of more than one tick run say I'm crouching. Now we can also do another file right here, crouching.mc function. We just did say I'm crouching here. Instead of this, we just did run function tutorial crouching. Basically, this means that you're gonna carry out everyone who's crouching. We're gonna store that in crouching right here, and then we're gonna execute as them. What we can do in this crouching.mc function, just do scoreboard players reset at s crouch. Once it's reloaded, I just sneak and it says I'm crouching and the good thing is that it keeps saying it forever until you stop crouching like that and that's basically our data pack I'll be making more videos on more features and the test data pack will be in the description I'll see you guys later